Hi, welcome to our channel. Please like and subscribe. Today, I'm going to show you how to set up a solar off the grid system. So, I'm not a licensed electrician, so please make sure you check with an electrician before you do anything yourself. So, you might be asking yourself, who is this guy and what does he know? Well, I did a lot of research myself and figured out how to set up a system all by myself, and you can too, just by watching this video. So me and my wife have been living in our tiny house for five years now, maybe a little over five years, and we have been off the grid, or partially off the grid, for um, a lot of the time, 90% of the time. The only time the power, mains power kicks in is if our batteries get to detrimental low, which has happened maybe a couple times. We set up our tiny house to be fully off the grid because we were going to be in a situation. We were in the middle of a sheet paddock with no power uh, and we knew we were going to need a way to have sufficient power to run lights, TV, uh, internet, all that stuff in a house that you need power for. In New Zealand, electricity is very expensive and so it was just another bonus that we could be off the grid and still have lights on when nobody else did if the power went out. It is. Who did it? So now I'm going to run through on the whiteboard some ideas and stuff to help you decide if off the grid living is for you. And I'm also going to show you how our system is set up as well. Alright guys, so when you're deciding what household appliances you want in your house or your tiny house, uh, you need to start thinking about how much watts they use so you can start sizing the right batteries and how much solar panels you need for your system. Okay, so a normal laptop or a computer uses about 50 watts. Alright, uh, microwave uses 700 watts. A light bulb, one light bulb, let's call it LED, right? That's what we have. Uses five watts. These are all estimates, so don't don't start shooting in the comments about uh, how off I am. Uh, a blender or a magic bullet like this will use about, uh, I think it was 200 watts. Okay. Phone charging, these are some iPhones here. So combined, they use about six watts each to charge, right? So 12 watts if you you know are a couple and you have two phones. A TV, our TV uses 70 watts. It's just a cheap flat screen TV, nothing fancy. TVs are really good these days anyway. So on our system, we don't have any microwave. <laughs> don't have any microwave we don't have an oven which uses a lot of electricity we don't have a toaster which also uses a lot of electricity we don't have all those things that use a lot of electricity as you can see in our house 50 75 200 which is only used you know for a split second and then charging phones it's pretty basic so every device or any appliance always has a label on it that tells you the voltage and the Hertz and the wattage wattage is key here so this device here uses 250 to 300 watts right so this is really crucial when you're trying to pick out things for your off-the-grid system what what you think will you'll need to ditch or what you think you can keep depending on how big your system is gonna be you want to add up the wattage of each item and this is how you size your system and this is exactly what I did so take all your items get all the wattage off them add it up you've got 50 let me let me let me uh, get rid of this here hold on so that well, we know the microwave 700 but we don't have it we're gonna base this off our system okay so 50 well hold on gotta go bigger hold on we'll get rid of this all okay. so our appliances Okay, we've got our um, a blender, right? Blender, 200 watts. Then we've got our 50 watt, our 70 watt 
a TV, 50 watt computer. And we've also got our, uh, what do we got? Um, our, uh, what do you call it? The phones, charging the phones. Then you got five watts for your light bulb, right? Well, that's one light bulb, whatever. We're just, we're just doing an example here, okay? So you've got seven. You want to add all your wattage up. Seven, 13, three. So you got 337. Now what you want to do is, you want to take that number, you want to multiply it by 10, okay? So that 10 is you're basing all this off 10 hours, okay? It's just a good round number because you want to act as if you're running all this for 10 hours straight. So you're going to get 3, 3, 7, 0, oh. okay? You want to take that number. This is your watt hours. Take that number and you want to divide it by 24 volts, which is our system. If your system's 12 volts, it would be different. You would put 12 in there, okay? But our system's 24, so I'm going to show you how, how, based off hours. And you're going to get 140.4. All right, and that number there, that's your amp hours. That is how big your battery should be just, just to run this stuff for 10 hours. All right. Now let's go take a look outside and you can have a look at my system so you can get a good idea of what we're looking at. This is our tiny house off the grid system. It cost us $4,000 five years ago. We've had to replace the batteries because one was faulty and we've also added in a 320 watt solar panel for cloudy days in Dunedin. Alright, so I'll give you a brief rundown of how this is set up. So over here, we have our solar controller for the single panel that we uh, did add in later. And these are the cables coming from the panels. And these are the cables going to the batteries. All right, you can see right now our batteries are about uh, three bars. And you can see it's, it's the solar is coming in, even though it's even though it's a bit cloudy today, it's still bringing in power. Um, <clears throat> and so that run, that's for the one panel. And then so the other two wires here go up into this little breaker box, then up and into the inverter there. All right, and those run the two panels that are close to one another. So that solar charge controller there is a three-in-one. It's a charge controller and it's an inverter and it's a mains power. So you can hook mains power up to it also to charge your batteries. So if your batteries get low, the mains power goes in here. See this yellow lead here? All right, so that is your input for your mains power, which is only if you have like really cloudy days for days on end, it'll um, charge your batteries for you. Um, pretty, pretty great little system because it's maintenance free. Um, and this just tells you what the charge is on the batteries. So right now we're, it's almost full. Charging away. All right, and then the two orange cables there's a battery switch there. You can shut the batteries off. And those two orange cables go down into the batteries there. All right. And the batteries are underneath that box there, which I'll show you. Up here, that is the mains power coming from the inverter 
to this box here, which is 240 volts, and then into that plug outlet, which goes into the house and has this multiple plug outlets in the house. So I've uncovered the batteries and we have two 230 amp hour 12 volt batteries. Our batteries are joined in series to create a 24 volt system. So our LPG runs the hot water heater and our cooktop in our kitchen. So I hope that helps seeing the system and all the wiring. I'll draw it out for you now so that you can get a better view. All right, so I'll show you how our system is set up. We have our two panels. We have our big panel, 320 watts. And these two are 270 watts. So from here, these two connect and they go to our inverter. All right. And this is also, it's a three in one inverter, charge controller and mains power. And this one has its own controller. Yeah. And it's 20 amps. This is 25 amps. Okay. So down here, these, this goes to the batteries. We have two batteries here. Huh? Positive, minus. Positive, minus. All right, so our systems run in series. Okay, so these two will loop positive and negative. And what will happen is these two will loop positive to negative. Okay, and then what you're going to do is you're going to connect mm -hmm. your terminal onto the negative there. You're going to have another cable that goes to the positive. Same here. Positive, negative. Okay? And we've added a little fuse here on ours as well, off the inverter um, controller. Um, so this cable, any cable coming off the bottom of the inverters or the controllers, is all, this is all thick gauge cable which is, I use welding cable. So all this cable here is all done with welding cable. So here, down here, back to the batteries, we've got 12 volt battery, 12 volt battery, all right? And they're running series, which equals 24 volt system, okay? All right, so if that all makes sense, we'll move on. So from the inverter, you have Let's, see, let's draw a house, okay? Here's your house. That has a plug point here. It's a nice plug point, okay? You plug in over here for your desk, and you got a plug on the wall for the kitchen. Yeah. I have triangle plugs in my house, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so we know. we got plug outlets in the house, right? we got to somehow get from 24 volts to 240. And that's what this inverter does. It converts the power from 24 volts from your batteries to 240 volts. This is DC, AC, direct current, alternating current. All houses, all mains power is an alternating current. So the 240 volt allows us to be able to run normal household appliances with ease and it's just way easier you can go to the store and buy things um, that a normal house can run anyways so off the inverter there's also another cable okay and that runs to the power company All right that's a telephone pole this is 240 volts Okay, and what that does is if we have cloudy day for cloudy days for a week, maybe even longer sometimes, and our batteries aren't getting charged, right, by the solar system here, what will happen is it, it'll, this computer, this is basically a computer, this inverter here, that'll say, uh-oh, 
my batteries are dying. And it will automatically kick in and the mains power will start charging the batteries. So it'll go boom, boom, and start charging. It doesn't happen very often here. Also, we have mains power to the property because I have a workshop shipping container that I do a lot of welding in and stuff like that. So the house is generally off the grid. The shipping container is just mains power. So there's one thing I forgot to mention. This number is New Zealand. So 240 volts is New Zealand and Australia. In the States, you'll be at uh, 110 volts. Okay, so this number would be the same as well. All right. So another thing to keep in mind is your solar panels. You don't want to just plonk your panels on anywhere old place. You want to make sure you ha you're getting sun majority of the day, which here in New Zealand um, requires us to be north facing. If you're in the U.S., you would want to be south facing. There's also different types of solar panels you can buy. So these two panels here are for sunny days. This big panel is for cloudy days. You also want to make sure your solar panels are clean. You want to make sure there's not dust or grime and stuff all over them. Check them periodically. Make sure that things are okay. Make sure they're not cracked. Um, this panel here, we had uh, a big windstorm and something flew up and smacked it and <laughs> put a big fucking jabber right in the middle of it. We, we actually managed to fix it. We looked up a couple videos um, on YouTube, and it's good as new. It's, we've never had a problem. Thanks so much for watching till the end. My knee is absolutely killing me from crouching right now, so please subscribe. And if you have any questions, please put it in the comments, and please subscribe and like. Thanks. See ya.